Hey, welcome everybody, Mr. On Demand, man with the master plan. I'm gonna show you how to do really quickly some very easy networking uh, with Windows. So let's just say you want a real simple Windows server. You just wanna share some folders over your network very simply, right? I'm gonna show you how to get that done real quickly and easily using just a couple of simple tools so you make it quick and easy. First thing you're going to need uh, on your main computer is you're going to want to get the if you don't have it already you're going to want to get this tool called advanced ip scanner it's free just search for advanced ip scanner in google search download and install it and you'll be able to find all of your network devices and you this is a really good tool because you still keep some security on as far as the the network discovery features so all your network devices don't just show up under the network icon and I, re I highly recommend using this this is a very very simple network search tool that allows you to search by IP address or just click scan and see all the devices on your network because most of the time we're talking about a small home network so when we're talking about a small home network you're not gonna have that many devices you may have two three four five maybe ten or fifteen if you're a big home and so that's about it. Let's go ahead and get to the next step of this. Uh, you want to have advanced IP scanner. If you don't have that, go ahead and download and get that. Let's go, go ahead and go to the machine we're going to share. So here is my laptop. And I'm going to go ahead and go to this PC or just go to your uh, file explorer, whatever way you can get to your C drive. And you get to your C drive and you're going to head and create a new folder. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go new and folder. So we're creating a folder to put things in because we're creating a server. You're going to, at the end of the day, probably have multiple folders that you're going to want to create if you're making a server. But we're going to uh, just call this laptop shared. And so now that we've got this folder created, we have to share it. There's a couple of steps we got to go through, not too, not too much. So what we're going to go ahead and is we're going to show more options and we're going to give access to specific people and we're going to want to add someone to uh, gain access to. Now you need an administrative user with a password uh, for security purposes. That's just, I, you're not going to want to do it any other way. We're going to create a new user. This laptop does not have a user with a password. So what we're going to do is we are going to make an, manage another account and we're going to add a new user to this computer. This is what I recommend adding. Uh, I recommend adding a separate user account because then you can tell if you've been hacked. Um, they're coming through your uh, your share your account where you're sharing your stuff or whether they're getting into your computer through your main login. But for this, uh, we're going to put. Um, don't have this person sign in information because we just want to make a local account. So we're going to put shared user and we're going to hit next. And out a user without a Microsoft account who's going to use this shared use uh, user. And we're going to set up a password so you can make the password whatever you want um, make the password here Okay, in case I forgot the password, you can put security questions in. That's something uh, you probably should go through and do. Use a good password, write the password down it, on a piece of paper. Also, I recommend creating a folder, having text files with passwords and logins to all of your important locations uh, for the future. Um, wow. It wants me to answer these questions. I'm just going to fill them out with random stuff next. Okay, so. OK, 
account options. Let's make sure I want this account to be a administrator. Personally, I like doing that. You don't necessarily have to do that. But uh, one of the reasons why I do that is usually I'll use that same account to do a remote desktop connection to log into the machine as well for my server. Because when I manage my own server, I use the Windows remote desktop connection to log into the server to do uh, remote connection uh, things to it that I need to do. Um, and I can remote connect into the desktop from any of my machines because my whole network is Windows. Everything's compatible with each other and everything is works nice and easy so i've got i've got, i've gone on gone ahead and i've made that user account now i'm going to close this and the name is shared user Close that okay so now let's go ahead and let's go to properties let's go sharing and let's go advanced sharing and we're going to share this folder laptop shared um, so you want to go to advanced sharing uh, the share names laptop shared we're going to go to permissions and right here we have everyone with different controls we want to add a user we're going to do this and do check name and we're going to hit ok now we've got shared user and we're going to give shared user complete control and shared user is a password uh, protected user read only accesses to everyone. Now if you're setting up a, a, a folder that you want to have uh, at least read access over the internet then you then you might want to have everyone have read access to it or at least if you want everyone in your home to have access to at least be able to see the files not make changes to them but see them then you can do everyone having read access or you can get rid of that that really depends on you and how you want your security we're going to apply this though real quick we've made a user password and username and we have done the network path and the sharing so now Double checking the share path. Everything looks good. Let's see if we've done it right. Let's go ahead and go over to our other computer. And we're, I've already looked up the name for this computer. So uh, it is HRLP9PA. If you don't know how to, uh, don't know what the name of your computer is, uh, real simply, uh, you go to the this PC icon and right click and go to properties and it will give you your computer name. There's a variety of other ways to do it. And there is the computer name right there to the computer we're trying to connect to and share a file from. And you want to use advanced IP scanner. Uh, let's go to network and we're going to network right now and we see ser server. We see one computer on the network. It's looking through the network. And we'll see if it actually brings up that computer. It doesn't. So the only computer I have, and I have my server configured, so it just comes up and I can see it right in the network. But for you and your ease of use circumstances, you don't have to worry about this because you've already downloaded Advanced IP Scanner. And Advanced IP Scanner is going to allow you to see all of your devices. The cool thing about that is, is it also helps keep the device from being seen by certain possible hackers as well. Let's go ahead and open up and it's going to ask us the login. And we're going to go shared user and okay there's the laptop shared. I put in the username and the password and look I'm in. There it is. There's nothing in the folder but what I can do is I can actually right click and I can map this drive, right? And I can tell it to reconnect it, sign in. I can give it a drive letter, whatever letter I want. This is going to be the K drive now. And we're going to finish. And now if I go to my file explorer or this PC, you're going to see the K drive in here. So let's go ahead and find our K drive. Let's see, X, Y, Z. There it is, laptop shared. 
Look at that. Shows 179 gig free of 237 gig on the hard drive to that laptop. And the folder's free. So if I copy something in there, I can then access it from this computer. I can copy something to that folder, and then the, it'll be on the laptop. And that's what's called network sharing, everybody. So what you've got is you then can create a uh, you can create a central server. Really simply, and you can create all the folders you want. Name those folders whatever you want, and then on every PC you just map the drives. You're done. Every time the computer boots up, as long as you leave that server running all the time, every time the computer boots up, you're going to have that folder mapped as that drive letter. Now let me tell you the significance of that. Having it be a drive letter makes the computer think the, the, the storage is local so that you can install a program and tell the program to install there. That really becomes important when you're talking about gaming because games a lot of these games take up a lot of storage right let's just say you've got two three four pcs in your home that you want to be able to play games on you got a handheld you got a gaming pc console or gaming pc maybe a gaming laptop right you got three you don't want to have to install that game on every single one of those devices instead wouldn't it be nice to just have a hard drive on a server where the game's at and then you install Steam, and then Steam points to that, and it gets the game. So all you do is install Steam, tell it where the games are, and boom, all your games are available. You don't have to reinstall. You only download the game once. You download it. It's on your server. All your machines access the games uh, in your home that way. That's a very, very nice feature that saves people from having to have a, a humongous amount of storage on their uh, Steam devices. And let's not even get in to the ability to create your uh, retro gaming emulation and actually play games from that. And then you can create a media center. You can have a media center accessing your movies, your music, your pictures, all from the server. So each one of your devices doesn't matter. They don't have to have your files. Your files are in one place, one central location that all of your stuff accesses. All of your stuff accesses the server for the data and you don't have to worry about it. It makes it really easy because when you get a new device and you set it up, there's not much setting up to do. You just have it find the stuff on the server and then bam, you got access to all of your data. Really, really useful because then the server becomes the device that you set up your backups on too. So then the server will do the automatic backups and does everything for you right there. Um, and uh, if you want it to be something else like a Plex server, you want it to be an FTP or even an HTTP server that you can access outside your home, that's other things the server can be as well. But this was the basics on uh, setting up your network and just sharing a folder. That's it. That's the beginning of it. Just sharing a folder. As soon as you share that folder, you can load anything on there. You can load any game, any program, anything on that folder. And then the stuff sitting on that server. That's it. That's the beginning to setting up your, your own network. It's not difficult. That wasn't hard, was it? I created a user account with a password, shared a folder, went to the other computer, found the computer, opened it, opened the opened it with the username and password done. I didn't have to do anything, any like super voodoo special, like special stuff. There was nothing involved. I literally had nothing super special that I had to do to do that. In the future videos, I'll do more videos on how to, uh, you know, set up the backups for your network, how to actually set up your server, how to set up the server to do a lot more things than just be a shared folder and file server. Um, so if you're interested in that, hit a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel for more information coming soon. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Shared folders. I mean, that's that's the building blocks. That's the basics of your network. That's it. It's really not that hard. All right. I'll see you guys in the next one. Catch you later. I'll have a good night.